So your boss asks you to work with a local engineer to select the right meter for your client's application. Do you know where to start? Well, in part 12 of this series, we'll dissect the step-by-step -step process that I put together to easily guide you through this sizing and selection process. If you've been following along with this series on sizing, selection, and installation of commercial industrial water meters, I'm going to test your skills by providing you with four real-world sample applications. I'll review one with you today, and then next week, we'll review your answers and discuss the analysis. Let's dive into it. I'm extremely excited about this lesson because I've really developed this custom step-by-step -step process that's going to walk you through how to properly size and select a meter. It's really seven distinct steps and I want, I want to go through each one of them with you. In order to determine the meter application, we talked about data logging, right? You need to understand the highs, the low flows, and then sort of this usage percentage of each of those. How often is it in the high flow condition? How often is it in intermediate flows? How, many, how often is it in low flows? When you understand that, then you can actually properly size a meter. The best way to do that, of course, is through data logging. Data logging process should be done for at least seven days because flows are going to be different during the week, potentially versus the weekend. And if you don't run it for seven days, you might be misapplying a meter for that application, right? The other point that I've made in the past is that data logging is fantastic, but you actually have to test the meter prior to data logging. Otherwise, let's say the meter is only 80% accurate. Well, let's just say there's something faulty with the meter. If you don't know that, the data that you're going to collect means nothing. It could be all wrong and you could really be misapplying the wrong meter for that application. That's step one. Step two, I want you to print out, it's probably easier to print them out uh, because you're going to need to sort of page through them. You could download the PDFs, but I want you to, to print out the product data sheets for the disc meter, the turbine meter, the compound, and the ultrasonic meter. Now, as part of this lesson, I'm going to supply you with those PDFs, right? Because I'm going to give you a, a test here at the end to, to test your knowledge and skills that you've learned over this 11-part series so far. Print those out. Put them right in front of you. Right now, once you have those in front of you, I usually just take it. There's going to be a lot of extra pages, and I've gone over in a prior lesson. I've shown you what you need to look for. You're looking for those charts or tables that show you the operating range, the crossover, the max continuous duty. Those things are the things that you're going to need. So I usually take those pieces of paper, I put a tab on all the pages that have the chart, or I just pull those out either way, and those that way I can re easily refer to them. The third step is going to be to analyze the operating range of your application. So you've got your information in front of you saying how often particular flows are happening in this application. Now I want you to take a look at the data sheets and find the meter that best fits the high flow needs of that application. Always taking into consideration the maximum continuous duty of that meter as well. Step four, you need to now analyze with the meters that you've selected for the high flow conditions, now analyze that against the low flow needs of the meter, the intermediate to low flow needs of the meter. Take those meters and sort of pare them down and say, all right, maybe I've selected three meters that could fit this application, but which ones fit the low flow capabilities of this application, right? The fifth step is if you have compound meters selected, I want you to analyze those according to the compound low flow principle. You remember what that is, looking at, you know, the if you've got a compound, look at the crossover point to determine what would be running on the low side of that meter and then what part of the flow would be running on the high side. And then take those principles that we talked about and see if the compound meter is running between 5 and 25% on its low flow side. If not, you're going to choose one of those other meters. Now, point six doesn't always come into play, but I want you to, to know and understand that pressure could play a factor here. If the customer needs a particular pressure on their side of the, the meter, right, you're going to have different pressure drops with different types of meters, and that might guide you to one meter 
versus the next because it has a, a lower pressure drop. So that's always a part of those application data sheets, or product data sheets as well. And lastly, if you're installing in a current piping configuration, you might be constrained. So you might not have the right amount of straight pipe in front of a meter for a particular type of application, or maybe you've got a valve located somewhere that you can't move. That might gear you towards a particular meter as well, if it doesn't adhere to those recommended installations that we went over in a prior lesson. So those are the seven steps that you need to consider. The next thing that we're going to do is we're, I'm going to give you a quiz. Now I'm going to give you a quiz with four different applications. Part of this is I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you that these meters are constrained between an inch and a half and four inches. I didn't go along the whole gambit of meters here. I just used applications that would fit an inch and a half to four inch meter. I'm going to go over the first one with you when we're, go, we're done reviewing these questions and then you're going to take the time print off those PDFs, right, that I've supplied for you. And then you're going to go through these applications and determine which meters are right. And then our next lesson, I'll review those, your answers, to see how you came to the meter that you selected, right? All right, so here are the four different applications that we have. The first application says, I've got a meter that runs 95% of the time, about 900 gallons per minute. 5% of the time, it runs between five and 35 gallons per minute. Very likely scenario. Which type and meter would you choose for that? The second application says, I've got a meter that goes between six tenths and three gallons per minute 18% of the time. And then 82% of the time, it goes between 110 and 160 gallons per minute. Which meter and type would I select for that? Application number three is an application where the meter runs between 225 and 415, 90% of the time, and then between 15 and 90 gallons per minute, 10% of the time. And the last one is where an application where I've got a kind of wide flow range here. I'm running from 1.25 gallons per minute all the way up to five gallons per minute, 70% of the time. And then between 15 and 140 gallons per minute, 30% of the time. Well, I'm gonna walk you through an example of how I would do this. And I'm really only looking at four distinct areas here. I'm not really taking into account installation and pressure here. I'm just looking at those four areas, right? I've got my product data sheets printed out and I'm going to walk you through how I would analyze this. Step one would be this. For this application running at 900 gallons per minute, 95% of the time, let's take a look at the high flow needs of a meter. What would happen is if I looked at my product data sheets, I would look at the four inch turbine meter. The four inch turbine meter has a high side operating range of 1,250 gallons. That fits my application, right? It's less than 900 gallons. It's maximum continuous duty, which really comes into play here because 95%, it's running most of the time at that GPM, right? At 900 GPM. It fits it because it has a max continuous duty of 1,000 gallons per minute. I'm only running 900 most of the time. I'm okay. A four inch compound meter has the right operating range all the way up to 1,000 gallons per minute, but if I take a look at the maximum continuous duty, the maximum continuous duty of that meter is only 800 gallons per minute. If I put that meter in this application, I'm gonna wear it out. So I wouldn't select a four inch compound for this application. So let's rule that one out. In a four inch ultrasonic, its high side is 1,100 gallons per minute, and its max continuous duty is the same because I don't have any moving parts, it's 1,100 gallons per minute. So now I've narrowed it down to two meters, four inch turbine, four inch ultrasonic. Let's take a look at the second criteria. The second criteria says, let's analyze the low flow needs of this meter, that 15 to 35 gallons per minute, 5% of the time. If I look at a four inch turbine meter, it has an operating range down to 10 gallons per minute. It fits my operating range. It's going to accurately measure between 15 and 35 gallons per minute. And then again, this standard low flow goes all the way down to six gallons per minute. It doesn't really come into play here, but it works. The four inch ultrasonic, it goes all the way down to one and a half gallons per minute. And it's extended low flow again, all the way down to three quarters of a gallon. So it fits this application as well. Step three is for me to look at if I have a compound. If I have a compound meter, I would analyze that compound and see if that low flow principle guidelines would fit. In this case, we've already ruled out the compound, so it doesn't really apply. Therefore, the two meters that I would select for this application would be either the four inch turbine meter or the four inch ultrasonic. So what I want you to do is now you take those other three applications that we talked about over the next week and you analyze that and we will review your answers just like this 
in the next lesson.